We need to talk about that dreaded combination of a SRAM dub crank going into a press fit 41 frame, commonly known as BB86 or BB92 for mountain bike. The problem with this is that we have a large diameter crank going into a relatively small diameter press fit frame and the bearings required to make that combination work really don't have much capacity to handle that load and as a result they tend to wear out very quickly, creak and cause you guys all sorts of problems. Today I want to talk through some of the solutions that we've come across, what works well in what situations and also hopefully you guys can add your thoughts and comments down below and get this conversation flowing and see if we can all learn from each other. Before we start looking at some of the solutions let's take a deeper dive into the problem. Now this is the SRAM dub bottom bracket and you remember that when SRAM first launched dub to the world they did it in a way of celebrating that they've almost made a bottom bracket for every situation that this SRAM dub system they came up with will be able to fit your frame because they have also made a bottom bracket to fit. Now they've made a lot of compromises to make SRAM dub fit a PF41 frame so this is a, a bottom bracket that I've just taken apart for you to see. Now in here what you have is that the outer race of the bearing bonded into this shell here and there's just a single row of bearings and here on the end of my pick you can see they're just tiny little one and one eighth bearings really really are quite small bearings the other thing is that the seal is quite compromised as well it's a very narrow seal and these are easily damaged they easily let water in and then corrosion gets into these i think anyone that's over owned one of these will tell you they rust very quickly and they start to rumble very very fast and some people around here even replace these as often as every four months or so they try to get a better fit by fitting these little delrin top caps as well so that's even further reduces the size of those bearings. You start running out of space, you know, you've got to get something that actually contacts the frame, some, something that contacts the crank, and of course you've got to get the inner race in there as well. So there's an awful lot of like layers of parts that really don't leave you much space for having a decent sized ball. Now compare that to uh, what you might get from Shimano, and you're looking at a 24 millimeter hole here, and you can instantly see that the size of the seals are that much bigger and the size of the balls inside are bigger as well. So this is a 6805 bearing, significantly more successful um, as a bottom bracket bearing than these. So the problem is, is that we just have not enough space in there for actually handling the cycling load. Now there's been quite a lot of suppliers over the years that have tried to come up with a solution for one of these. Now, one of our favourites in certain situations is BB Infinite. Now they do a Hambini style one piece design, but you can see how skinny these bearings have to get. And again, this one corrodes very, very quickly. You can probably hear. Now, this is the one that we took out of Simon's time trial bike. Um, you get fantastic sort of frictionless experience out of these, but not for very long. And so we tend to only fit these on really high performance time trial road race bikes where we have to fit this combination because it's the rider preference for their crank set, power meter or whatever. And this is probably the best way of doing it, but they really do not last very long. Another player in the more performance orientated solutions are these guys from Cycling Ceramic. Now, these guys probably offer the best lightweight solution. So if you're building a very lightweight bit of road bike and weight is of paramount importance to you and you trust that your frame has good alignment, then these guys do a fairly good solution as well. Now, their approach to this has been to use a very, very thin outer race. You can just about see that tiny slither of steel pressed into this aluminium housing in an attempt to try and get a bigger seal and a bigger surface area in there as well. So they do work really well, but only if you're 100% confident with your frame alignment because they really don't give much support outside of that. But for super lightweight hill climbing builds, good, good little solution. And then we have brands like this, so Hope also got on the act as well and Hope came up with like a stainless steel bearing and they started to put a double row of bearings in there. So this is one that I've taken apart here and on the inside you can see compared to the SRAM one just has a single row for bearings. This one actually has a double row. So now you've essentially got double the amount of little balls in there. Still small but there's double the amount, double the amount of surface area and you've got a better chance of a more stable bottom bracket. The problem with this is it does depend a lot on precision because now you've got a double stack set of balls that you really don't have much compliance in the system at all. So when you're making these, one, you have to make sure that your frame is 
really well aligned and two that you have them perfectly installed with the correct amount of preload because they're really not very forgiving when you have two rows of balls. Something that came across my desk recently, uh, these from Mortop, which I think is a Taiwanese brand. Um, they've got some very funky marketing, which I'll show you in a second. But the reason I made this video is because this seems to be um, emerging as one of the best solutions I've seen to this problem. Double row of bearings. They also do a steel version um, as well as a steel bearing with ceramic races. And they do a mountain bike version and a road version. So on the mountain bike version, they've even included another set of external seals. So now you have the seals on the actual bearing, but you've also got the option of running an additional set of external seals. So they're trying their hardest to fix this problem as best they possibly can. They've also extended this bearing race out slightly so that you now have the ability to run a proper cable shield actually interfaces with it as well, which I like. And you can just see how wide this section here is. When I first saw these, I was a little bit anxious about how they would interface with the SRAM dub crank because you've got a machine section here in the center, which is a smaller diameter. So the bearing has to sit on these bearing surfaces here. And they really have gone to town with the precision on these. They're actually a fairly challenging fit. You really do have to line it up precisely. If you go in even remotely crooked, uh, everything just gets jammed up. But you can see once you've got everything lined, you do get a very, very nice fit. Today, I'm gonna to show you how we check all that bearing alignment and get these installed absolutely perfectly. So before I install these more top bearings, I have to say they kind of emailed me a little while ago and said, hey, do you want to have a look at our more top bearings? And so I'll look through their range and most of it was pretty standard stuff to be honest, but this really caught my eye and I wanted to say, yeah, look, I'm really interested in what you guys are doing with this BB86 to dub conversion because it looks like you've probably got the best solution on the market. But like most engineering companies, they really don't get their head around marketing at all. And it's a real shame. Let me just read this from you. So the mountain version, Designed with silicon cover, this variant offers superior protection against mud, dust, and other foreign objects that could affect bearing performance. It's the ideal companion for riders tackling extremely technical terrain and hard hits, ensuring your safety remains uncompromised. Um, sometimes I just wish that these brands wouldn't try and put marketing speak on top of a technical product. They don't need to do that. I really do think that more top, you would do much better from telling everybody what materials you're using, what grease you're using, what seals you're using, and why you think your product is superior. We don't need to know things like your safety remains uncompromised. This has got nothing to do with safety. Oh, it gets worse. Just to uh, lighten up your day a little bit. The road version featuring a light contact surface slide for efficient rolling. This version is inspired by the Taiwan Com Challenge, one of the most grueling climbs in cycling. The contour line pattern of the Wulang adorns this model, symbolizing the extreme BB's ability to help riders conquer even the most challenging roads without compromising. You just don't need to do that. Again, the difference between the road one is exactly what you expect. All they've done is take away some of the friction drag of having this extra seal. And instead they've put on this rather nice, to be honest, little anodized aluminium bearing shield instead. Fair enough, it's got some like laser etched contour detailing on there, but it's essentially the same bottom bracket. They do a steel version and they do a ceramic version. The only difference is that rather than having the, the contact seal, which adds friction, they've just used this nice aluminium thing here just to reduce that friction. Again, you don't need to do all this marketing nonsense. Just tell people what's in the box and what they're getting. That's all we ask for. Anyway, run over. <laughs> Let's get this installed and see how it works. The bike that we're gonna install in this on, this is actually a bold Lincoln. Really, really funky suspension design. It's full suspension, but the actual rear shock is kept down here. What's really interesting about it is that the whole bottom bracket is actually mounted on a massive bearing. I think it's like a 6811. It's huge. So what you're actually looking at here isn't a part of the frame, this is actually part of the suspension. So behind here, there's another bearing. This whole thing rotates. This is actually the main swing arm. And inside here, there's a little linkage that connects to the shock. So we know this is quite well aligned. One, because it's one big piece of machined aluminium and bolted together, and also the suspension wouldn't work. So I'm pretty confident in the alignment with this. We've also measured this hole as well. The size of this hole has all been machined 
well. So if you're coming to fit into this on your own bike, which is like a carbon fiber frame, please, if you're going to install a bottom bracket like this with those double rows, got to be super sure of both the bore size and the alignment before you use this. Otherwise, I just don't think you're going to get the, the bearing performance you want and you're probably better off with something like the SRAM system, which has got more compliance built into it, and you're just gonna to have to put up with replacing it every few months. Nothing special to really install with this, really. We have a metal on metal surface, in this case, we've got the steel against an aluminum surface. So according to the instructions, we're just using a good quality bearing grease. So we've just got our mobile XHP22 grease in there, and we're using the wheels manufacturing press. And because of all that paraphernalia inside here, which I've just talked about, we can't even use this little bearing shield, because that's just going to foul the frame on the inside. What I do like, actually, this little stepped area here is really, really handy for getting these started because you've kind of got a very nice guide to get all the alignment sorted with your bearing press. So when you're pushing in a hardened steel bearing into soft aluminium, the danger is if you don't have all the alignment set up that you can go in crooked and the sort of hard steel bearing literally just etches out parts of the aluminium. So before we push, we're just gonna make sure this is really beautifully aligned. You've just notice that the non-drive side has just started to go a little bit crooked. So I'm not gonna persevere with it. We're just gonna knock it back out ever so gently and try again. It's quite hard actually because the, if it's on another bearing, it just wants to rotate. And we're just looking for really good contact the whole way around. Looks good. At this point here, if you feel any sort of constriction with the bearing, like you've pushed it in and now it feels really, really rough, probably means that the actual hole you've pushed it into is oversized and now you're just compressing that bearing. And it will really show up when you've got such small tolerances like on these bearings. So if it feels even remotely tough, pull them back out again if they then free up, you've definitely got um, a bore problem and really should get to your bike shop and let them use some reaming tools to get that bore to the right size. Don't try and persevere with it. Your bearings are just going to wear out in no time at all. Before we put these bearing shields on, we're just going to use a tiny bit of grease. Don't go nuts with this. It will just collect dirt. This is really just sort of help me hold it in place, really. Give it a tiny bit of light lubricant. Last thing, just wind on a little bit of preload. Remember, we're just taking out the slack in the system because of that double row of bearings and the very, very small balls, definitely do not want to over tighten your preload. Okay, we looked at a fair few different types of bottom brackets in this video. So a quick summary for you. If you are at all unsure about the bore size or the alignment, really keep it simple, keep, keep with the SRAM dub off the shelf bottom brackets and sort of resign yourself to the fact that you're probably gonna to have to replace these fairly frequently. They're only about 35 quid. It's not the end of the world. I'd invest in the tools, learn how to do it, keep an eye on the maintenance and don't let them get too bad, especially don't let them seize up and cause any sort of under rotation on your crank. If you know that you definitely don't have good alignment and but you still want to get a frictionless experience, like a time trial bike, a high performance road bike, then really BB Infinite really are your only solution. This is something that Hambini, Invite, et cetera, really don't touch. This is the only way of getting a really good frictionless spin, but they do corrode very, very quickly. So be prepared for investing in bearings and doing a fair bit of maintenance yourself. And then if adding all the extra weight of one of these doesn't appeal to you, um, and you know that you have really good alignment on your frame, then something like this from Cycling Ceramic might work just to keep the weight down and keep those cranks spinning nicely. Okay, onto the main point in this video, this double row of bearings. But before I do, if you're finding this video useful and you want more content like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got loads of videos where we go into real technical details about things like bottom brackets and wheels and all sorts. So this is the, the bottom bracket that I kind of got excited about to make this video because this double row of bearings in a more refined design like this one from Mortop, I think is probably a good solution if you're very confident in the bore size of your frame and you've got a fair degree of confidence in the alignment, but you also want some added durability to what this can give you or some added performance without necessarily going to the full commitment of a one piece and the compromises that come with that. This to me seems to hit that middle ground. More top actually go a little bit further than most of the other brands on the market with this design. So they do a mountain bike and a road bike version, although trying to identify that on their website can be a bit tricky. The amount of grease in here, again, you can clean these out, you can pop these seals out, clean them out. They go for about a 60% grease fill in there as well. So they should be pretty serviceable. Um, and yeah, if you look after them, I think this could be the best solution I've seen for this problem. But 
as always, the audience of these type of videos are the best place to ask. So get down in the comments if you've come across problems with bottom brackets like this or any of the others that we've talked about. And more to the point, if you come across an absolute killer solution, get down in the comments because I certainly want to know about it. We're all here to learn. I learn from you as much as you learn from me. So please get down there, add your two cents to the conversation. Thanks for watching.